Okay. Call each back. January 16th. Lesson 8.5. We need to make a distinction between annuities. Okay, so like we were saying before, we need to make some major distinctions between annuities. Annuities and just compounding any interest, okay? So the big major difference between these two is when we were working with the other formulas, our first formula we were working with the amount. When we invest, we had our P, which is our principal, and a starting amount, plus 1 plus I to the power of N. Okay, and we had our formulas. The I in this equation is your interest rate, which is R, divided by compound periods. And N, which is the number of compound periods, is number of years times, again, compounding periods. This is when we put in a one-time amount, okay? So if you guys remember, I was talking about cash for life yesterday. Yeah. Technically, or sorry, the other day when we were doing our uh, lesson 8.3, we talked about cash for life, and we discovered the present value if they're giving you a single payout, okay? We didn't technically do it properly because cash for life is set up like an annuity. It's actually giving you $1,000 every month, or sorry, every week, and then getting interest on top of that, okay? So this is when, let's say we had $5,000, and we go ahead and put it into the bank, okay? This is a one-time payment, one-time, sorry, deposit, okay? This is what we've been doing for everything beforehand. Everything beforehand was a one-time deposit. We put $5,000 in, and we just allowed it to get interest more and more and more interest. An annuity is when we make regular deposits into the bank and earn interest. So an annuity is a very different formula. The amount of an annuity is equal to the regular payments. That is our R. Then we still get the 1 plus I to the power of N. Subtract 1 divided by our i. Our i and our n are still the exact same. We still calculate them this way. But this would be if I was maybe getting uh, $5,000 every month, say. $5,000 a month we decide to put in, which is a heck of a lot of money. Okay, This would be a regular payment. That's what an annuity is compared to our one-time deposits where we're just compounding interest. So let's imagine that you have a savings account and maybe you're trying to save up for uh, oh, you know what's actually a better one? College funds. A lot of times parents will set up college funds or university funds for their kids and they'll deposit a small amount over a very long period of time. It's money they don't touch, so they usually get a good interest rate. So let's make up one here. Let's say we have example one. Uh, parents decide to make a college fund. They assume that the kid they're having, so let's say they're having a kid this year, will go to college in 18 years. So what that means is in 18 years, they need to see how much this fund will be worth. So it's going to sit in there for 18 years. They've decided that every month they're going to put in $200, okay? So every month, $200 a month is what they're going to put in. So what that's going to be is that's going to be our regular payments, okay? They're also going to get compound interest every month. Let's say because they set it up like a college fund, the bank has this agreed to give them a better interest rate. Let's say the bank is going to give them 5% compounded monthly. Okay? So 5% compounded monthly. They're putting in $200 every month. They're going to be doing this for 18 years. Anything else we need to know about it? No, I think that's good. Okay? So, because these are regular payments, guys, we don't use the formula we had the other day. We're not working with this because the amount in the bank is going to increase by at least 200 every month because they're depositing $200 every month. And then on top of that, they're earning interest on that new amount. So the interest amount is increasing every month because they have a much larger amount. So the formula we need to use is our regular payments annuity formula. Okay, so here's our formula. Let's make sure we have all of these variables. We're trying to solve for what their final amount's going to be. 
our regular payments are $200, okay? We need to calculate I, okay? Remember, I is a formula. I is equal to your interest rate divided by your compounding periods. So the interest rate was 5%, so R is 5%. As a decimal, R is 0 0.05. That's important. Our C, it's compounded monthly. So how many times a year does this get compounded? 12. 12. It's 12 months in a year, so we're compounded 12 times throughout the year. So first to calculate our I, we know that I will be equal to 0 0.05 divided by 12. Okay. So we put that in our calculator, 0 0.05 divide 12. And we get 0 0.0041 and then 6 repeated. What you can do is many of your calculators will be able to do this in one step if you put it in properly, okay? So to be very accurate, you might want to actually put the fraction in, the 0 0.05 divided by 12. We have I. The other thing we need to figure out is our N. So the number of times this compounds when we keep the money in the bank. Our N is our years times our compounding period. We know that there, it's going to be 18 years because we expect at 18 they're going to have to take this money out to see if they have to pay Sorry for college. We'll see how much they'll actually have. So it's going to be 18 years and it's going to compound 12 times a year. Okay, So that means over the life of this, 12 times 18, 216 times it's going to compound interest. Okay, So our N is 216 and our I is this very small decimal. So when we go to plug this into the formula, A is equal to our regular payments are 200. They make 200, they deposit $200 every single month. Okay. 1 plus our I is 0 0.004167 to the power of, this is our N. Our N is 216. Subtract 1, and then all divided by 0 0.004167, okay? So it looks complex. We have to follow bed mass when calculating this. So the first thing I'm going to do is deal with the inside of the brackets. That part's usually relatively straightforward because it comes, it's just one decimal, 0 0.004167, okay? To the power of, well, let's put these brackets around, 216. So it's to the power of 216, subtract 1, everything's divided by 0 0.004167. Okay, so according to bed mass, this is where we run into issues. Many people will start to subtract the 1 first. You guys need to deal with the exponent first, okay? So we have 1.004167 to the power of 216, right? We're going to get a very large decimal. So A is equal to 200. And then in brackets, 2.415, oh, oh, I wrote that wrong. 4.551, right? All right, we'll round it to 2. Subtract 1. Divided by, again, that very large decimal we have at the bottom. Okay. When we go to subtract that, it's pretty straightforward. We're going to end up with 200 times 1.4552 divided by our decimal. So 200 times 1.4552. Oh, that worked out nice. 291.04 and then divided by 0 0.004167. There we go. So at the end of the 18 years, so in order to figure out how much money of their own they put into this, we first have to figure out how many payments they make.
Now we've actually already done that. Remember, 18 years, 12 payments a year, that's what our exponent is. Our exponent is telling us how many times they deposit money or how many times we compounded interest. So they put in $200 every month and they did it 216 times over the life of this. So they had, they made 40, oh sorry, they put in $43,200. So that's how much of their own money they've put into this. We gotta figure out how much interest. So we take the annuity or the amount of the annuity and we subtract it from how much money they actually put into this. Uh, zero one. Get that one cent in there. Okay. So they earned one cent and then forty four six six two. So they earned twenty six thousand six hundred forty four dollars and one penny in eighteen years. Okay? That's not bad. Remember, this is different than if they had just deposited a chunk of money. They're constantly putting in $200 every month. So let's say now we've decided that we want to retire in 25 years. So 25 years from now, I decided I want to retire with a million dollars in the bank. All right, that would be nice. Okay? I discovered that if I were to deposit money, the bank is willing to give me uh, 12% compounded annually. Oh, that's not that great. All right, my bank account's going to give me 12% compounded annually. It's a very high percentage, yeah. 12% is very large. Compounded annually. Okay? That's it? And then you uh, why? I think that's right. When you're calculating this type of money, okay, this is compounded annually. So maybe I decide to make deposits every month, but they're not going to give me interest every month. They're only going to give it to me annually. So it only matters how much money I put in at the end of the year, okay? So we're going to have a regular amount every year, okay? So let's say we're trying to calculate that regular amount right now. But if I normally was just putting money into the bank and they were giving me 12% annually, if I decided to put in, okay, this is like a trick question. If there was a trick on the test, it would be something like this. If I was to put in $100 a month into an account where I'm getting 12% annually, what would my regular annual payments be? 1200 Very good. It'd be 1200 because at the end of the year, those hundred dollars, I've deposited it 12 times, so every year I'm putting in twelve hundred dollars as an annual regular payment, okay? It really depends on when the compounding periods are. That's very important, okay? So uh, in this one, we're actually trying to solve for the regular payments. So we're going to take this formula we had again, okay? And we're going to try to solve for all the variables that we don't know. Now, we do know our amount. What's the amount I'm trying to get? A million. So here's our amount. We're trying to solve for our regular payments. We can solve I. I is going to be our interest rate divided by compound period. What are the compound periods? Once. It's only happening once a year. So our interest, uh, R is normally 12%, whereas a decimal is 0 0.12. What is my I going to be? 0 0.12 divided by 1, 0 0.12. So this is one of the more rare occasions where I is essentially what our interest rate is. Uh, our N is years times compound period. Again, we're only compounding once a year. So our 25 years is essentially how many times this compounds over the life. It's only going to compound 25 times. Okay, It's a little different from before. We have our numbers. We're going to plug them into our equation now. So we have 1 million is equal to the regular payments. Now I'm going to quickly, uh, I'm going to add up the first bracket. Are you guys okay with this? The number is going to be 1.12. Okay? I didn't actually put it separate. It's pretty easy to add those decimals to the 1. Okay? Mad math. Our exponent is 25. Subtract 1 divided by 0 0.12, okay? 
Now, the goal here is to isolate R. Okay? We need to isolate our R. So what I want to do is I want to start moving things to the other side of the equation. The very first thing I'm going to move to the other side of the equation is my 0 0.12. Now, because this says division, what operation do I use when I bring it to the other side? That's right. We're multiplying that by a million. Okay? R equals 1.12 to the power of 25 subtract 1. Okay. We're going to multiply it times a million. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And we get 120,000. Okay? That was actually pretty straightforward. I should have done that. 120,000 is equal to R and then bracket 1.12 to the power of 25 minus 1. Now, there's a couple ways I can do this. I can decide to move this without evaluating it first. Or I can evaluate the brackets to a single number and then move that. That's what we're going to do for this one. Okay? So we take 1.12 to the power of 25. 17. Wow. It is pretty much just the number 17. Subtract 1. We're just going to call it 16. Okay? That's a pretty round. There are 1, 2, 3, 4 zeros in the decimal places. So we can assume that this number is roughly 16. Okay? So this becomes 16, 120,000, okay? Normally, you're going to get a number with a very long decimal, rounded to, you know, four, three decimal places, something like that. Now, to isolate R, it's very straightforward. What do I do? Yeah, I divide by 16, okay? So divided by 16. So the regular payments, in order to have a million dollars, 20. Oh, why did I put R? Yeah, I was sorry. So we take our 120,000 divided by our 16. $7,500 a year. So I need to put in $7,500 every year for 25 years in order to have a million dollars. Okay? That's nice. Let's actually figure out how much I'm actually putting in of my own money. Okay? Once again, I'm doing this 25 times, right? It's over 25 years, and I'm putting in $7,500 25 times, okay? 7500 times 25. So, what? So, uh, after double checking, what this number means, $187,500, that's how much money I actually put in. So over 25 years, I actually only put in, well, $187,500. That's how much I invested from my own pocket. So what that means in terms of interest, okay. in terms of interest, we subtract that from the $1 million. Okay. And it means we've earned, wow, that's great. $812,500 in interest over 25 years. So homework, page 499, numbers 19, whoa, that's not one, 4, 9, 12, 14, and 15.